All right, let's do a quick video about this. I've been asked about this back up from a couple of people. I actually had somebody send me an email this week. Uh, they're praising the Zettelkasten that I maintain. Zettelkasten is a, again, Zettel, Zettel, I'm saying it wrong, I know. Uh, it stands for slip, and Kasten is box. So that's, you know, uh, Nicholas Luhmann's practice of putting his notes all in in boxes. And I, I practice something, a very non-bloated version of this same thing where I just create a directory that's got a, a date, a unique time date for each uh, second. And I call, I call it an isosecond based on um, the GMA time. And and then I just can put notes in there. And that's what you saw me using in my, in, in, in my news and stuff. And so somebody asked, they said, oh, I love it. It's so great. I love it. I want to be able to, 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 to use it. Uh, you know, I want to be able to mix it up and change it up and everything. And I was kind of scratching my head because I did put, so the license on my Zettelkasten itself, um, let's see, let me see if I can find it. So the github.com rwxrob slash that, which at some point is going to be a web page. It's just not yet. So, so slash zet this here, uh, is, is, is getting big and it's, it's getting kind of, you know, convoluted and it's going to have to. You know, I have to rebase it every once in a while to keep the size like reasonable, but it, at least I have some place to, to put stuff for now that that is like based on a standard that I'm following that that anybody can follow. It's super easy. You just, you know, you create a directory and you just use you know, comma mark and then I have a little tool that links to the videos if there is one on it. Um, and that's all good. But the, the, the license on this content, this is my, you know, my writing uh, and I have lots of other writing that I still have to bring into here from other tools that I've used over the years, which is why I spent so much time like coming up with a, a standard way to store it before I come up with a standard way to generate a website and everything from it. And I refuse to use the database because, for example, that can't be saved in the Arctic along with the rest of my source code. So that's one of the main reasons to do this. Um, so so the license is is unique. Um this uses an attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. So what this means is, number one, you can't copy this content in any other way from its current form. So uh, it's, it's a database. It's just not a relational database. Where it's, good point, Jenny. Um, so so, so this, is, this means that the only way that you can copy this is if you make a verbatim copy of the repo as it is. And I understand that that's a burden to people. Um, and that would be if you wanted all of it, like, so if you wanted all of it for whatever reason, you wanted a backup of it or something. And that's, that's the reason I made it a Git repo. If somebody else wants a, wants a, wants a backup of it. Yeah. The forks, the forks are not violations. Uh, some of the people that have forked it, were doing it to troll me and to, uh, uh, and I won't get into that drama. Please, let's not bring it up. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been attacking me um, with, yeah, they do love capital words, uh, through my Zettelkasten because of my opinions and the things I've expressed here. And they, I haven't given them any other platform to really disagree, and they're too lazy to make their own platform. So they attack me by opening issues and violating GitHub policy. Uh, if you want to read that, you can. You can go read about it. It's kind of funny, actually. But... But forking is not a violation. Forking it and then altering your fork in any way is against the law. You can't do that to my content at this moment. And that's why. The number one reason that I am not allowing that is because I know that the assholes of the world will find me. They will do that. They will satirize the content. They'll fork it, create a derived work, claim it's mine, put it under a different name, and put and put other words in there. And that's against the law. And I deliberately did that because I wanted control over the content. Now, if they want to create unique content and sample a paragraph here or there, that's creating that's coming uh, that's covered completely and entirely under common law copyright use. So they can do that. They can even satirize it. Uh, in their own, on their on their own stuff, they can't duplicate my content and make a derivative work. That's against them. Uh, uh, and then you'll need some of those lawyers to file a civil suit or not. I mean, the civil suit that we need lawyers for is only in existence because society has decided we needed that, and that just like we've decided we needed tech people. So let's not bring up that argument all over again. We had a big lawyer fight the other day earlier. Uh, so. Um, so this is this is why this is so this particular 
this is the content from which I'll be writing books at some point. It's the content for which I'll be generating websites. And in every time that I change the form of the content, I'll reevaluate the license of that content that's been released. So for example, if I take all this content and I make a book out of it and I clean it up, I have to deal with the publisher and they might have a different de de dependency of uh, copyright law versus just giving it away this way. So I have to do this. Otherwise, I, I'm, I'm destroying my ability to draw on this content to write other published works later. Because if I do, the legal teams of those companies will be like, of those publishers would be like, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm not really inclined to do a book right now, but if I were, I want the option. And if I didn't have this license, there would be people making books all over the place or they would fork it and do whatever they wanted to. And that's fine. So, so the complaint this person wrote, it was very, very complimentary that he said, he said that, uh, that, you know, at this point it was just a read only sort of thing. Um, and, and, and it was more like a book. And I was like, exactly. Right. So you can go to the content, you can read from it. What I want to have happen is I want people to make their own Zettelkast. In which case you can copy and paste, you can quote from me uh, and put it in there. And you're totally within your rights to do that. That's, that's a legal right. That's not even included in here that you get automatically. So, so that's what we want. We want people to, to deal with this as if they were dealing with academic papers you know, somebody wouldn't copy somebody's academic paper and just put their own name on it. That would be wrong. Uh, and that's, this prevents that. Uh, and we also don't want them to, you know, copy an academic paper and make fun of it and then represent that paper as if it were from the other person incorrectly so that people would get confused about who it came from. Both of those are really, really bad things. And those are protections under the law that I agree with. That do require lawyers. Yes, I know. So, so that's, so, you know, have that, clone it, read it, copy and paste, you know, segments of it into your own Zettelcasted copies when you need to. But you can't, if you want to fork it even, you can fork it as long as you don't change it. If you're afraid it's going to go away because I'm going to delete it, which is, it's perfectly within your right to make an exact duplicate of it so that if I delete it, you can still keep that because that's, that's already according to the law. You, you can keep a copy of it infinitely from this time forward uh if i change the license you you couldn't depending on how i change the license you couldn't keep those additional copies of it going forward but but anything that's been ever released under this copyright is guaranteed and, and forking it is completely within your rights because you've made a direct identical copy of of the git repo which is technically not a derived work that is an exact copy of the work so so that's that's what i'm doing on that Okay, so the other legal question I get is you, people see me use this this completely unbaked and non-finished Zettel tool, which has served to to um, inspire a few people to make their own. So I have this tool here called Zet, uh, and it is a Bash script right now that doesn't have any documentation on it at all. It's, it's constantly changing. It's very, very much my own thing, but I want people to 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 take it and do whatever they want with it. And so it actually is something else. It is in the CMDZ directory. Um, and this is, it tells you the template it came from. You can use that template to build your own if you want. Um, and this has is released, as you can see, under an Apache 2.0, which is the most permissive, legally appealing license on planet Earth. Lawyers love Apache 2.0 because it's so freaking long. Uh, it's really long. It grants patent rights and everything. So this this is the mo safest I can make you uh, if you want to take my shell script and go to town. And somebody has. So there's a couple of people that have already taken it and made it into their own. Uh, and one person has actually written a blog about it. They um, made uh, a version of it in Go, uh, which I've, I'm working on my own version Go slowly eventually as well. Um, the, the main thing here is I want people to create their own tools rather than depend on Obsidian and all these other proprietary tools, which, which really get you to lock into their system. They say they have exports and imports, but the truth is they're proprietary. They want you to lock in. And I'm, I'm fundamentally against locking people into a tool that's designed to help people manage their and exchange their knowledge. And, and I, I would never do that. So, so this is an Apache 2.0 kind of thing. And you can go with it and make it make whatever you want. You can do literally anything you want. The only thing I ask is attribution, uh, which which Apache tool requires. 
uh, I think Apache tool requires attribution. I could be wrong. Does it? Uh, permissions, commercial use, trademarks, liability, warranty, uh, conditions. Nope. You don't even need attribution. <laughs> yeah. So you really can go to town here. Now I've, I've asked, you know, politely that people do do that. Uh, yeah. The lock-in thing. So I, what I want to see happen is I want to see a lot of people get inspired by this idea and make other freely available options as well. Make other FOSS. Uh, I just, I really, really hope that they'll come to some agreement about using common mark, which is a very well established markup standard. Um, and you know, things like that, potentially the same way that I've organized mine by, by directory, but nobody care. I mean, that's the closest thing to, to, to Nicholas Lumen's original design that I can think of, uh, that also leverages the advantages of computers without going overboard. So I think it would be great to have a standard there. Um, and I've been, I've been working kind of in the, in the background on defining uh, an actual standard for Zettelcast and content that everybody could agree on, uh, which would be, of course, based on common mark. If the current version would just say, put a directory that has a unique name, name the file, readme.md, and put it in common mark, the end, <laughs> you know, with some caveats. I mean, we, we can't have HTML in there at all. Otherwise we build in a, a web dependency, which I think is a, as a, is a big mistake. I think, I think you could have something extra in there, but I, before I get into any of that, I, the, the legal question here, and this is the question, can I use your Zettelkasten? Yes, you can use my Zet command for free and do whatever you want with it. Yes, you can read my Zettelkasten and create a duplicate of it if you want, but you can't extend it and you can't, I, I don't even think you're supposed to be able to fork it to tell you the truth. Uh, I think I might have something overly zealous written about that. I might have to remove that because now that I think about it, it is just a duplicate, an exact duplicate. So, so I might have to change that. I do want people to be able to create exact duplicates of it that are not derivative works. Derivative works are anything that modifies the original work in any way. So if you were to fork it and create any changes or additions of your own, that would be a violation of the license. But a direct copy uh, as a Git clone is not a violation. And I, I probably need to put that in and update that more explicitly in there. So hopefully that answers the question for you. Um, you know, go out there and read it and make your own. Uh, change all the spaces to tabs. So you're going to test me and see if I'm going to sue you over that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I've had, I, if, if we strictly go by the law on this and I actually wrote about this, if you fork it, uh, if you fork this pro, if you fork, not this, if you fork, if you fork my Zettelkasten and then you change it to correct my spelling, that's a derivative work. <laughs> so based on the current license, I'm almost positive that you can't submit pro requests because in order to do that, you would have to change the original. In other words, the only way to get me to change something here is to send an issue on it. If you send an issue on it, then I make the change. If you make any change to a forked repo, you're in violation of the law. And, and that's up to you about whether you want to do it or not. But that's the definition of a derivative work, even if it, because it's been published. If you, if you make a pull request, anybody on the internet can go to that fork and download your fork, which is a very clear violation of the law on derivative works. So, you know, you can call me stingy on that, but I'm doing it for your protection as well as mine, because I, I, I don't want other people to be putting my content with my name out all over the place and then just changing a few things here and there. Uh, and misrepresenting me, which is also illegal, but they'll do it because they got people who fucking hate me out there. <laughs> That's probably a good place to end that video.